folks, as soon as I announced Core Shelf and I recorded the previous video talking about the tech stack that I used, lots of Elixir developers were like, okay, but why inertia? I know you said it's a cool tech and all, but why did you pick inertia over live view specifically? Is there a reason? Do you have any regrets? And five months ago, I recorded a video about React versus Phoenix Live View, but it wasn't very specific. It was high level React and client side apps versus the backend heavy and real time heavy Live View. Now I want to be more precise. I am going to talk specifically about React plus inertia versus Live View why I picked one over the other, and if I have any regrets with this decision. First of all, why did I pick Inertia? The thing is, I started Core Shelf nine months ago. Nine months ago, I wasn't a heavy AI user. I would say that AI wasn't as big back then. So I thought, well, I have a lot of experience with React, I know Live View because I used it for tech school, but I don't think I know enough Live View in order to build a more complex web app. So that's mostly why I chose React and Inertia because of my professional experience. But now that we have AI, things changed. Now I don't need to be a master in Live View. I don't need to have five years of professional experience with Live View in order to use it. I need to be comfortable enough to review code and have an idea of what's going on. If you have this, this is good enough to pick a technology that you're not super comfortable with. So if I were to start Core Shelf again today, with this in mind, I think I would go with Live View instead of Inertia. But let's talk about the specific points that I think that Live View wins over Inertia besides the AI stuff. Point number one, I think that Inertia has too many layers and Live View doesn't. What do I mean by that? Here is an Inertia controller for the index page for this courses page. Once I do all my queries, and I grab the courses. Now course is an Elixir struct. And because under the hood, we're using a JSON encoder, I cannot send a struct to the front end. It is highly recommended that you convert this struct into a map, and then you send that to a front end. So that's what I'm doing. I have another module called course JSON. And inside it, I have a serialized function where I grab the struct and I convert it into a map. And sure, this is also useful to format some fields, but it's an extra layer. I need to remind myself that whenever I create a new feature, I need to create a course underscore JSON module to convert the struct. And then on live view, I only have one layer. Take tech school, for example, this is my course live page. Check this out on the same file. I have my mount function, which is pretty much your use effect that runs on the mount on react. I do a couple of queries here. Then if I click on load more on the front end, I'm going to trigger an event here. If I do a search, this function is also defined on the same file. And you could even have the HTML for the page on this file. But in order to better organize my file, I decided to have a separate one. But you could have a def render with all of this on the same file. And this is all Elixir. I'm not translating from a JavaScript world into an Elixir world and vice versa. This is all Elixir on the same file. Conceptually, I think it's much easier. There are less layers that you need to create and less files that you need to go from one to the other to the other. Nope. You have one file, you mount, 
handle events, handle params that change on the URL, render your HTML all on the same file. And I absolutely adore this. Next thing that I disliked about Inertia is, well, I already mentioned it, but AI is amazing at React, but it sucks at Inertia. It is really, really bad. Every single time I create a new feature, by default, Cloud Code tries to write a REST API on my controllers on the Elixir end and then use fetch on my front end. And I know what you're thinking. Hey, Daniel, just add this information on cloud.md, right? I did. And it keeps making the same mistakes from time to time. I cannot close my eyes and let Cloud work. I need to manually check every single file because I am 90% sure that in at least one of them, he's going to write a JSON API. And on inertia, you're using all these different functions here. You're not using the regular assign from Phoenix. You're using assign underscore pro. You're not using render or JSON. You're using render inertia. This is a very minor difference, but Claude keeps messing this up. And it's so annoying. Like, I cannot trust Claude 100%. What about LiveView? Well, check this out. If you didn't know, starting from Phoenix 1.8, Phoenix now ships with an agents.md file, which is specifically targeted towards the AI agents. And if you're using Claude, no problem. You simply rename the file to Claude.md and you're good to go. I tested this new feature once and it was amazing. It felt like Elixir is coming in strong on this new AI era. I feel so comfortable writing Elixir and using Claude because agents.md helped so, so much. So funny enough, LiveView AI generated code is better than React plus Inertia. Now, if you are using React and React Router or React and Next.js, I know AI is great using those, but for Inertia specifically, it's kind of horrible, which is a shame. And this is not specific only to Elixir, okay? I know some Laravel devs that they say, on Twitter at least, that Cloud code is amazing at writing PHP code, but as soon as it starts writing inertia, it starts getting bad all of the sudden. Next reason. Let me take Core Shelf as an example again. This is a public facing website. You're not going to log in and then enter an internal dashboard. No, this is all public. The only difference here is that when you're logged in, you're going to be able to see your profile and then edit it. But this is all public, which means I need my channels listing, my playlists listing to appear on Google. So I need server side rendering. Now, can I do this with Inertia? Yes, I can. If you read the docs for Inertia Phoenix, you're going to reach this section right here. By default on other ecosystems, it is common for you to have your main server running plus a Node.js server running to server render each page through Node. On Inertia Phoenix, that's not the case. It is more optimized. We are using under the hood a pool of Node.js process workers. So in theory, this is more lightweight than having a separate Node.js server. But here's the thing. If I want to do server-side rendering with LiveView, what do I need to do? What do I need to change? Zero, absolutely nothing. You're good to go. You're going to type phx.new, name your app, and you're good to go. No extra setup needed. No, no GS process workers. Uh, no, no need to add a step on your Docker file to install no GS and all this extra infra because technically you're managing two ecosystems. 
on live view, it's only Elixir. So you're going to use less memory by picking live view over inertia or anything else that requires a Node.js server. Another thing that is very annoying when you're working with your dev setup and you have SSR turned on on inertia, check this out. Let me start my local server for course shelf. Then I'm going to pick a random page, courses, index. I'm going to type on top of the search bar, hello, YouTube. Checking in my local server. If you go to courses, nice. We can see hello YouTube here. If I erase this and save, let me refresh. Hello YouTube. Hold up. What's going on? Why is this still showing up? But if I try hard refreshing this with command shift R, there you go. Now you see the changes. I don't know if this is a bug or not. I don't know if this is a bug related to inertia or inertia Phoenix, but I've seen other people from other ecosystems saying that as soon as they turn SSR on the HMR on the dev server just stops working. And this is annoying. Live view works out of the box. And that's the main thing. Like I simply run phx.new and I'm done. Everything that I just said on this video is going to work by default. I don't need to change anything. I don't need to add anything. I don't need to install anything. I only have one programming language, the dev server works. Okay, so just to finish this video in good terms with inertia, if you're watched until this point, you're probably thinking, well, you are completely regretful about your decision to choose inertia over live view. Well, I am a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. If I could go back in time, I would pick live view, but I still think inertia is a close second place. Do you know when DHH is talking about Ruby and JavaScript and he's always like, I don't like JavaScript, but JavaScript is a close second favorite language for me. I think I am on the same way with Inertia and Live View. I adore Live View and Inertia, I'm going to be more careful choosing it in the future. But if you compare Inertia with Next.js, Tenstack or whatever other JavaScript frameworks we have available, I still prefer Inertia. I would pick Inertia anytime compared to Next.js, for example. So let's talk some good things about Inertia. What do I think is good about it? Well, obviously, I mentioned this on the other video about React versus Live View. If you're building client-side heavy apps, Inertia uses React under the hood and React is king in terms of client-side only stuff. And when I say client-side heavy apps, I don't mean necessarily like a Trello or a Jira or Figma. No, like anything that requires a heavier package on the front end. So for example, drag and drop functionality. I do have drag and drop on course shelf. For example, I can grab this, place it on top, or I can do this, but I want to revert. So all I have to do to make this work using React is install one library. I think it's the DND drag and drop or something, React DND or something. And that's it. I had to install one library because drag and drop is a little bit client side heavy. Another example, if you want to do a Google Maps integration, you want users to be able to pick a pin on a map, like a specific coordinates on a map. We have a specific package for React and Google Maps. And you're one install away from making this integration working. With Live View, well, this is more of a backend focused framework. It's backend first. So you can definitely work with JavaScript, but it's going to require some glue code to make it work. It's not as hard as people think, okay? But I would be lying if I said it's as easy as installing React-Google Maps. You just cannot compare these two. But I still believe that 99% of the apps out there 
are more backend focused or backend heavier than client side heavier. Most of the apps that we have is just simple CRUDs, right? We don't have a lot of client side interactivity on most of the apps. So I think picking Live View most of the time is a reasonable decision. And then final reason is obviously people know React. At this point, I feel like everyone knows React. And if you're working with a team, you got to take this into consideration. If your team knows React, it would be unfair for you to join a meeting and say, hey, guys, we're going to use Live View. It's this super niche library that only I know, but we're going to use it. Like, it doesn't work like that. So especially if you're working with a team, I think Inertia is the best pick. If your team has React experience, which is most of the time. But again, for my projects, I'm working solo. So I don't mind using LiveView. It is a more niche library, but I know LiveView. I know enough in order to review Claude's code work. And I don't need to pick whatever is trending because people have experience on trending JavaScript libraries and live views more niche. But anyways, it's my experience. Only my experience counts for my side projects. So that's the reason why from now on, I'm going to default back to live view and I'm going to be more careful when choosing inertia. Oh, and one final thing. Some people say that another advantage of picking React is that you have access to Shed CN and UI libraries. But now Phoenix 1.8 ships with Daisy UI. And people think that Daisy UI is like a weaker version of Shed CN for some reason. And this couldn't be further from the truth. We have very complex components here, like a calendar, drop downs. So this is good enough, in my opinion, for most of the cases. But that's it. Let me know your opinions. If you agree with what I said, my next software, which I already have one in mind, is going to use Live View. And then because Course Shelf is already too big now, I have 727 commits of inertia and Phoenix code. It's just not reasonable for me, a solo dev, to just rewrite everything. And the app is working. It is working really well. So I have no reasons to change it, you know? So yeah, that's it. Let me know your opinions. Let me know if you agree. Which one are you most interested in? Is it Live View, Inertia? And because I invested nine months out of my life into going full heads down Inertia, I am going to make more content about inertia, so do not worry about that. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.